So this is the Cobalt Salin Lab. So to begin, we need to make our salin ligand. So we'll start here with 40 milliliters of ethanol. Add to this Erlenmeyer flask here. This is a 95% ethanol. Go ahead and start the heating on that. So we need to bring this to a boil. So let's heat this gently until we get to a boil. I also have here the 3.4 milliliters of salicyl aldehyde. Add that now. Anyway, and then once that comes up to a boil, just stirring going, can't you? And once that gets to a boil, we'll be ready to add the uh, ethylene diamine. All right. So I'm going to weigh out the ethylene diamine. Pretty stinky stuff. Are one gram, just a tire over, but that'll be okay. So our ethanol has reached a boil. So now we're gonna add our one gram of ethylene diamine here, very slowly so that we don't have it foam over. That's the rest of Rathlin Diamine in the pipette now. Gonna turn the heat down just a little bit more. There we go, it's all in there now. So now we'll let this stir for three and a half minutes and then we'll put it on our ice bath, let it cool down. So it's been the three minutes. We can even see that we're already starting to precipitate some of our saline complex, or our saline ligand. Uh, so I'm turn the stirring and the heating off. It's a little bit warm. So we're gonna let that cool off the hot plate before we put it into the ice bath. Got my ice bath right here, ready to go. Just let that cool down just a little bit first. This aluminum top to this uh, lab jack should help cool that off pretty quick. Alright, 
that in the ice bath here. Cool down, and we'll be back in a few minutes when we're ready to filter it off. All right, so our saline has had a chance to cool. Ooh, it's actually almost solid in there. Let that warm a bit. Let's grab a spatula and try to get that out with. set up just to do vacuum filtration. Go to the stir bar. And I've got just a little bit of ethanol here. Use this to Turn off the vacuum briefly, and the rest of our ethanol to wash. a little bit of a mix around. Right, yeah, so once that's, uh, we'll let that sit there for 10-15 minutes. Once that's nice and dry, we'll uh, scrape it into a vial and see how much we got. So our saline has dried on the vacuum now. Go ahead and turn the vacuum off. Grab this beaker too. Come over here, got a weigh boat already on the balance. this lovely yellow crystalline compound into the weigh boat here. Your stir bar, we'll rescue that guy. four grams. All right. So now we're ready to begin the complexation of the of cobalt with the, the with the saline ligand that we've made. 
So I've got here our apparatus set up and I'll kind of give a rundown of it. So I've got a three neck round bottom flask. The center port here, I've got a condenser and the necessary adapters for that. Got it hooked up to the water lines and those water lines are secured. And the top of the condenser has a septum. On, the, on this right side um, arm of the flask, I've got a, an addition funnel that has a stopper in it. We'll be needing to add a solution to that later. So we'll remove that stopper when that time comes. Got a stand here with the thermometer for the water bath that's below our flask here. And then in our third neck, we'll go a gas adapter so that we can um, have a flow of nitrogen through our system. We're not quite ready to put that in yet. Uh, the first thing we're gonna add is our cobalt, or sorry, not, not the cobalt, the saline ligand through the um, open port here. So I got a funnel and I've got here two grams of the saline ligand or H2 saline we might be calling it. So let's carefully get that into our flask. wash that into the flask and dissolve it in 60 milliliters of ethanol. That's what this is here. This is the 95% ethanol, so it doesn't have to be anhydrous. Use that to rinse the remaining solid off our funnel. Just kind of spin it as we pour here. Pre-grease the uh, gas adapter. We'll take our nitrogen line here, attach that. And we will secure this guy with a rubber band. Well, that's two rubber bands. Now that that's all set up, we can begin our nitrogen, but right now we have no exit. So we'll take this needle and bubbler and insert that into the septum in the top of our condenser here. Make sure we open this key and then turn on the nitrogen. Let's start flow a little bit. I'm up here on the valve at the top of the hood. Right, looks like I'm going to have to put some pressure on or close off, put my finger over here on the bubbler to get the nitrogen to flow through our system. Start our stirring. solution in the flasks. All right. I'm going to purge this or flush this with nitrogen for a bit and I'll be back when we're ready to move on. So in order to get the saline to dissolve in the ethanol we need to heat our solution here hence the water bath. So we'll heat this. We want it to be between 70 and 80 degrees. 
All right, so while that's heating, we can slow our nitrogen flow considerably. Maybe one bubble per second or so. A little bit too slow. Don't know if you can see that bubbler there. That's probably pretty good. And we can also fill our condenser with water from the water tap here. All right, so while we're waiting for that to heat, we can also prepare the cobalt acetate solution that we need. So I've got here on the balance the 1.86 grams of cobalt acetate tetrahydrate that we need. Put that in this little beaker here. And then add to it nine milliliters of water. And we'll have to heat that to get it all to dissolve. And then that will be going into our addition funnel. So if we're careful, that will also heat as well as stir right there. And then that will be ready to add. When this, uh, when the saline has dissolved in the ethanol. We might just have to swirl it every now and then. I don't know if it will swirl on the side of the hot plate like this. Or actually stir here, but... Oh, it's kind of stirring. Okay. Well, we'll be back when we're ready to move on. To uh, help this get, get hot and stay hot for the... Um, to get the saline to dissolve, just move our pull that solution out of the way briefly. Then we can wrap the bottom of this in some aluminum foil. Ought to be okay, and then put our cobalt solution back on there again so that it doesn't uh, so we didn't knock it down while we were doing that. So the H2 saline ligand has finally dissolved in our ethanol solution there, and we've reached about 75 degrees on our hot bath. Our cobalt acetate is also dissolved. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the stir bar from that beaker, just with a larger stir bar. And then pour this into our addition funnel. There we go, oh, not quite all of it, come on. Last drop, there we go. All right. So now we can add our cobalt acetate solution in water to our saline solution in ethanol. There we go. I can see stuff immediately precipitating. So I'm going to raise the level of my hot bath now since we have more solution in there we need to raise it that might also help us get the stirring to work again I think it's kind of stalled out it might be too much solid kind of bogging out the um, stir bar I can't really tell we'll leave that wrapped up in the foil heat and stir for an hour come back and be ready to move on. So our heating for two hours is finished. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off our heating and our stirring, remove our foil, and lower our hot bath. Be 
carefully slide this Moving that away out from under the flask so that I can put a bath of cold water underneath it to cool it. Of course, don't want to try to be moving a hot, hot plate off of the uh, lab jack that it's on. That is a recipe for getting your fingers burnt. this guy up to cool our flask um, and then once we have cooled it we can um, filter it off collect our compound so our flask is now suitably cooled down so we can turn off our condenser water as well as stop our nitrogen flow just disassemble our apparatus at this point. So I'll continue to get this, uh, I'll get the condenser out of the way and I'll set up for filtration. So we are ready to begin filtration. Um, actually first, let's wipe out some of the grease from one of these sidearms. Right, so turn on the vacuum. Now we wash with five mils of water uh, three times, so a total of 15. So I'm gonna use a little of that to rinse out our flask. Just a bit more. Very good. washing and we're going to shut off the vacuum. I'll add most of the rest of that water. I'll just add it all. And take my spatula and so I can extract my stir bar too. And then stir the compound around a little bit. some vacuum, grab our ethanol, we're going to wash with five milliliters of ethanol as well, 
just kind of eyeball it, it's not critical volume. Well, that's nearly 10, that'll be okay. break the seal here so that it doesn't immediately just suck through. So add most of that ethanol. Good stir. And turn the stirring back or the vacuum back on. wash that off of my spatula, but it didn't do a very good job. finish we wash with five milliliters of diet ether uh, actually we'll do that we do that twice so let's go ahead and get 10 in here Now we'll pull vacuum on that for a few minutes, 10 to 15, and then we'll be ready to collect our compound and weigh it. So according to the procedure, further drying would need to be done in the desiccator. Um, so the best way to do that would be to load this into a vial that you have know the weight of empty, put that into the desk, put the compound into the vial, and then um, the vial into the desiccator, and then you could get an, actual, an accurate weight of the compound at a different time. So I'm gonna weigh out some of our cobalt saline complex here for the oxygen, oxygen uptake experiment. So we need between 50 and 100 milligrams. Three point two milligrams, point one. And we'll take that <clears throat> and put it into the bottom of our little sidearm tube here. Set that down for a second. I feel like it will pour out of this corner better. Ceiling ready for the next step. 
So to use the manometer, that's what this U-shaped tube here is. So we have this length, we have the graduated tube side, and then we have this um, just plain glass tube side. This is our movable arm, so you can slide it up and down in the clamp. So to use this, we need to fill it with water. Just got some DI water here. And we need to fill it so that the water level is just near the bottom of our tube here. So I've got it filled about the eight mark there on this tube. <clears throat> anyway, and then if we raise or lower this, since both ends are open, the pressure remains the same, so they should always even out. But if we closed one end, lower it you see yeah, it's hard for me to hold the pressure oh there you go if I just push on it you can see that I've increased the pressure on the left side and if I release it changes so this chain this will help us see that we can change the uh, how much volume changes when we do the oxygen uptake so I've got five milliliters of DMSO in this speaker here. I've got my oxygen line. Turn it on. Can we get a bit of piss here? Ooh, too much. There we go. And then we can just bubble oxygen through our DMSO for a minute. Come over here. Test tube like this one. We want to fill up this with the DMSO until we're about an inch or so, two centimeters from the top. That's about that five mils is about the perfect amount. Now we want to carefully lower that into our sidearm flat uh, tube here with our cobalt sealant in it. Grab that with the tweezers. So I can get that in there. All right, so now that we have our oxygen saturated DMSO in this tall test tube with the cobalt saline on the bottom separate from each other, we need to flush the system with the oxygen and then connect it to the manometer. So the first thing we can do is connect our tube that connects from the manometer to the that arm tube. Let's rotate that a little bit. That's not going to be there. We go. And we'll take our oxygen tube. We want just a gentle stream. And just blow some oxygen into here. Ready, I'm gonna take the septum and you want to put it on upside down over the tube. If you put it in this way, it increases the pressure in here too much and you won't be able to use the manometer as I have it set up. That's what I just found anyway. So when we're done with our oxygen, we'll just take that away. Cover our tube up with our septum like that. Kill the oxygen flow. Clamp our sidearm tube in this clamp here on the side. So we're down on the level with the manometer here. You see our, our tube here. So the water level in the movable arm is about here, and on the graduated arm, it's at eight right there. 
So we want to adjust these, the height of the movable arm and the other arm, so that they're the same, which will tell us that the pressure inside our tube is uh, atmospheric pressure. So right there looks pretty good to me. So and it's a little bit below eight, so now we would want to note this measurement. So go back to reading burettes. Um, it's like 8.12 milliliters, 8.11 milliliters. All right. So now take our Hold on to the, the stopper, but not try not to heat the tube with your hand and try not to touch the stopper, like push on it or any way that will change the volume because that will influence the pressure inside. So you want to tip that DMSO out of the tube. this and our solution has kind of gone brown that's another thing to know so I'm gonna hold this kind of on its side the more surface area of the solution the more um, oxygen it can uptake oh yeah and if I shake that you can actually see the solution rising I can anyway In your experiment, you'll want to shake this and let this sit here until you no longer observe any change. And then you'll use the um, volume of uh, oxygen that was absorbed to make some some things about the cobalt complex that we've made and how it binds oxygen. So, anyway, that is the cobalt saline O2 uptake.